In today's video, we're going to look at what it means to give your ex space, what you're trying to achieve, and whether it means that they'll miss you and come back to you. Being dumped is incredibly painful, especially if you don't see it coming. If you still want your ex back, you're probably ready to do almost anything to get them back, but you're probably not sure whether that's even possible. By the end of this video, you're going to understand why giving your ex space is almost always the best thing to do, why it might work, and why it might not. And importantly, what the different possible outcomes might be. Now, relationship problems are best fended off before one person leaves. So don't forget to subscribe now for more videos with all the best advice to help you fix your relationship early on. Okay, so from your perspective here, we're talking about when you want to get back together with your ex, a recent ex, and you're trying to find the best way to make that happen. Now, I can't guarantee that that's going to happen. There are literally no strategies that I could offer that will achieve that. Your ex is allowed to move on and you have to be able to accept that. If you're giving them space as a manipulation effort, it's going to backfire and probably quite badly. If your ex feels the need to break up with you because they didn't have enough space, you need to resolve that problem first. What is the alternative to giving your ex space? it's probably not going to be a good look. You're not going to get a giving them space cookie just for not being clingy or stalkerish or camping out on their front lawn. So what are you trying to achieve by giving them space? The first thing is that you're showing them that you respect their boundaries. And that's really, really important. Remember that space isn't something that's yours that you give them. They invite you into their lives or they don't. When you give someone space, you're not giving them a gift. You're showing them and proving to them that you don't feel entitled. And that means you're making them feel safe enough to relax and to trust you again. Now, you can probably empathize with that yourself. It's kind of like the difference between someone asking you for a favor and them just expecting that you'll do it. Okay, having someone say, hey, now I'm really busy today. Could you make me dinner? Is very different. Someone saying, what time is dinner? It's the same thing with giving someone space. Now, the second thing is that you're giving them a chance to notice all of the little things that you do for them. Now, when you love someone, it's easy to do lots of little things for them. You might send them a message just to cheer them up when you know that they've had a busy day at work. You might remind them about their mum's birthday or show up somewhere with their favorite cookies. I'm clearly all about cookies today. <laughs> the trouble is that we start to take those things for granted. We don't mean to, but they just become part of how the world works rather than something special that someone is doing for me. When you go no contact to give your ex space, you're resetting their understanding of how the world works so that they can see all of the things that you were doing for them, rather than that just being a part of the world. Now, if this is gonna happen, you actually really do need to go no contact. If you keep doing all of those little things, they're not going to be able to, re to reset their understanding of just how far above and beyond you go for them. They're not gonna notice. Now this could be tough because you don't want to see them struggle. Okay, they're your ex, but you still wanna be together with them. And you might like their mum and you don't want her to feel forgotten on her birthday. But guess what? That's not your job. I'm gonna give you an example from my own life. Now, luckily, this isn't a situation where either of us want to get back together, so no one's getting hurt, but my ex and I have stayed really good friends, and we still do a lot of the little things that just make each other's lives easier. He still has me included on his Google Calendar just so that I always know when my family's birthdays are, because that was what he did for me. He told me when my, when my family had their birthdays. He still texts me the night before to remind me. Now this is fine for us because we're both happily with new people now. But if he was trying to give me space in order to win me back, this would be a dreadful strategy. How can I miss all the ways that he makes my life easier if he keeps making my life easier? Does that make sense? I hope so. 
The third thing you're doing is that you're allowing any small problems in your relationship to be seen in proportion. So as well as recalibrating his attention to all the nice things you do for him, having some time apart also gives you a chance to create some perspective around all the little niggles and problems that you have in your relationship that frankly aren't really problems. We almost always have small problems and annoyances that they fundamentally don't matter. Maybe he never calls when he says he will. Maybe he's always just 10 minutes late. Maybe he doesn't plan ahead and always just assumes that you'll do the planning. He'll have similar annoyances about you. That's fine. It's totally normal and I would argue probably almost inevitable part of being in a relationship. You're not merging into a single person with one person's needs and wants. You're two people who have decided that you're willing to make big compromises in order to be a couple. Giving him space and going no contact lets him realize that he doesn't actually care much about those little niggles. He might realize that he doesn't have to hoover your hair up off the floor, but actually it wasn't that big of a deal. He might realize that he actually misses you singing in the shower or that you wanting to go out for snacks at 10 p.m. wasn't actually a problem for him. It just felt like it at the time. So this lets both of you focus your attention on where the real problems are in the relationship rather than the niggles and annoyances and all those little bits of being irritable with each other. You're also giving yourself space to breathe and to think about what matters to you without him being there the whole time to take your focus. When you love someone, especially if you think that your relationship is coming to an end or it's on the rocks, it can take a huge amount of your attention and effort. You're desperately trying to fix every problem that appears and you're almost living in their head, thinking about their worries and their irritations. And it doesn't give you the time or the space to see the bigger picture. Spending time alone is important for many reasons, but one big thing is that it gives you the time to really think about what you need and want in your life without thinking about someone else's needs. Now I know we all have to compromise in a relationship, but that doesn't mean that your needs should be ignored. Think of it like a negotiation. You wouldn't go into a negotiation if you didn't know what you wanted, would you? How can you try to find a middle ground between your needs and his needs if you don't know where your starting point is? Going no contact and giving him space is important for him, but it's also important to give yourself mental space from him. Try to distract yourself and focus on you and your needs. Whether the relationship is salvageable or not, this is still going to be important and helpful for you in the long run. So what are the possible outcomes if you give your ex space? It could go many different ways. There's a chance that they will miss you and they will come back to you and you will take them back. If this happens, you're still going to need to work on the underlying problems in the relationship that led to the breakup in the first place. In this case, you're going to need to make some boundaries really clear. For example, it's totally okay for them to ask for space within a relationship, but you won't tolerate them ending the relationship and then coming back over and over and over. If they end it in the future, that will be the end and you will need to move on. This shows that you respect yourself as well as your partner. And you're not just telling them, you're also proving to yourself that you are worthy of respect. And that's a really important step. Now option two, is that they miss you and they want to come back, but you've used the time to realize the relationship isn't working for you and there's time for you to move on. Now this can be hard for both of you. After all, you were devoted to him and you really wanted him to come back to you. It feels wrong and even ungrateful to decide that you don't actually want him anymore after that. I'm a big fan of gratitude as a daily feature in a relationship but never as the cause or driver of it. You can't keep dating someone because it's ungrateful not to. That's not healthy for either of you. When he left, it hurt you, but you took the time you needed to work on yourself. You learned some things about yourself and you started to build a different relationship with yourself. By the way, I have a great video on how to build a healthy relationship with yourself. And if you're looking to give an ex some space, I strongly recommend that you check that out and maybe use some of the tips that I give you there. Now, if going back to the relationship you used to have doesn't appeal anymore, that's actually a really good sign. It means that you're putting your needs first 
and you expect more from a partner. Honestly, be really proud of yourself if that happens. You did it exactly right and you will end up with a better and healthier relationship in the long run because you've learned to love yourself. Now, the third possibility is that he doesn't come back to you. Bluntly, this is probably the most likely outcome and it's important that you prepare yourself for this. If he's broken up with you, it's actually quite disrespectful to assume that he's gonna come back. Assume that he means it and try to focus on looking after yourself and adjusting to a life without him in it. This way, if he comes back to you, he's gonna be a wonderful addition rather than having the pressure of feeling as though you need him to survive. It's also worth talking a little bit about attachment styles here. If you have an anxious attachment style and your partner is avoidantly attached, this can be a huge trigger for stress and problems in the relationship. If you've fallen into the anxious avoidant trap where he pulls away, so you become increasingly clingy. If this sounds like you, it's worth taking a look at our video on the anxious avoidant trap. Giving each other space, even without breaking up, can be a good way to reset this kind of relationship. Just make sure that you discuss the rules of your temporary separation beforehand. When you get back together, you're also gonna need to have an open and honest conversation about what you can both do differently to make sure things go better this time. So that's it about whether your ex will miss you if you give them space. Honestly, we don't know. I hope that was helpful. How does it relate to what you think? Have you ever ended things with a partner and you've missed them so you've gone back to them. What made the difference and how did it work out long term? I'd love to hear from you in the comments and as always please do like and subscribe.